So, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody, at, at this stage of the proceedings. My name is Pat Meir. Um, I'm based at University College Cork, and let me introduce my good friend and colleague here, Ronan Hennessy. Uh, we're part of this uh, geoscience e-laboratory project. We're the lead institution here, hence the reason we're here. Um, if we just look at the team makeup, let me st start by apologizing for the absence of our colleagues from Dublin and Galway. There's a national research review on today uh, in Athlone, of all places, so um, these guys are, are locked into being at that, and they send their apologies. So, again, we apologize for that. We're the only two geologists, I think, in the country who are not in Athlone today for, for that reason. So, let's quickly go through the team. Uh, as I say, University College Cork are the lead partners uh, on this. We've got Galway um, and Shane Tyrrell, who's a sedimentologist based in University College Galway, uh, is, is flying the flag for Galway. University College Dublin, we've got an igneous petrologist, a guy called Julian Menouge, who is, uh, has been very active uh, in, the, in the project. Trinity College Dublin deserves a special mention. Bals Camber, who's the professor of geology at Trinity, uh, is the link partner here. And Trinity were very much you know, innovate, are, uh, in, instrumental in uh, initially developing the use of the virtual microscope in this country um, back at, you know, two or three years ago. So the genesis of this project has come from the work uh, done at Trinity College Dublin. And last, and by no means least, the Open University. The software that we're using, the virtual microscope software that we're using, uh, is, comes from the Open University. And Professor Simon Kelly uh, has uh, very, very generously given his time uh, and that resource uh, to make this project happen. So I really do want to flag uh, the importance uh, of their contributions. What are we going to do? Or what did we say we are going to do uh, five, six months ago? Well, the key thing here is that first point, teaching and developing teaching and learning resources using the virtual microscope. And we hope that this will be uh, a game changer in terms of how we deliver uh, undergraduate education in the geosciences and the areas of optical uh, mineralogy and petrology. I'll come back to the reasons why we think that uh, in a minute. But as part of that, to introduce something that, let's be honest, for, from, from, uh, as a geoscientist and a geologist, we are pretty traditional in how we uh, deliver um, you know, teaching in terms of petrology and mineralogy. You know, the classic lab-based traditional approach has been in place for literally uh, over a century at, at this stage. We're very slow to change and move. We are, and increasingly in areas like GIS and other technologies, are starting to shift uh, to a more progressive, um, modern approach, if you like. So developing teaching enhanced learning um, will be, I, I would argue, probably one of the first national initiatives uh, in this area for, for geoscience education uh, in this country. This will allow students, and I suppose the key thing here is that we're going to, at the root of this was, I suppose, in some respects, a resource issue. This idea that you, uh, to train students in uh, petrology and optical mineralogy, you need expensive microscopes, you need expensive materials, thin sections, rock thin sections. Um, that has huge impact on, on what is limited resources for, for our institutions. So the idea of through the virtual microscope, uh, allowing students to access high quality digital thin sections, museum quality uh, thin sections, uh, accessing, allowing them to access it 24-7, uh, there's no limit as far as lab time is concerned, we feel uh, is going to be really important for the future of geoscience education in this country and in terms of international impact uh, abroad. So uh, I'm going to hand over to uh, Ronan, who is the project assistant uh, on the project, and he's going to go through the, the, the nuts and bolts of the project uh, of uh, progress to date. And we'll, I'll come back to you to finish up. Thanks, Pat. OK, so um, I guess uh, one of the main challenges that we've had to address is, is as a geologist, you can go to the field and you can look at rocks, something like this here. You can look as close as possible and lie down on the ground with a, with a small little lens, but to be honest, you know, you can't really see uh, what's inside. And when you look close enough at uh, rocks, it's, it's quite often the minerals, the crystals that you're looking for. This is an essential skill of the geoscientist across the board. Um, as Pat said there, uh, generally one of the techniques that we would use is using the petrological microscope. Um, we would use slides like this, which have been 
collected, which are in, um, I suppose, in drawers and in archives and people's offices uh, in each of the partner institutions and in museums um, throughout the country and certainly even around the world. Um, but as you can see there, these are made of glass, they break easily, etc. Um, and also um, they can be in, in limited supply. So the virtual microscope essentially uh, digitizes um, these thin sections, these slides, these um, 0 0.03 millimeter thick slices of rock. So thinner than your than the human hair slice through the rock. And when you when you slice through a rock like this, the colours and the the shapes, to put it very simply, um, become quite beautiful, quite incredible. And then the uh, the methods that you use to actually analyse and to investigate these various minerals and crystals begin to tell you a lot about the rock and the processes and what's in there themselves. Um, I'll just give you a quick look at what we're actually talking about, just in a sense. So, um, on the Open University's website, we have um, begun to get some of these uh, resources, if you like, these uh, the hard resources themselves, into digital format. Now, the uh, Open University have the micro virtualmicroscope.org website, and they have various collections there. Um, here we have our own one, which is a work in process as such. Um, we have about, uh, at present, four or five uh, sections digitized. I've been over to visit um, the Open University and their virtual micro uh, lab in Milton Keynes. So I can open up one of these here and you can get a sense of what we're talking about. Now think about it as a, third, a second or third year student. If you want access to these slides, you generally get it for maybe two or three hours a week. Um, if you're missing for any reason, or if you want to do revision towards the end of the year before your exams, time is limited. Through this, we can give 24-7 um, access to these slides themselves, and they really are quite beautiful. But what the virtual microscope is, is doing for us is it's given us full interactivity, and essentially we can um, use a lot of the techniques and the operations that you would use with the physical microscope itself. Nice to have on the um, uh, on an internet browser, but likewise it also works perfectly well on a smartphone. I don't know if you can see that there, but basically the same thing here. Now what this allows us to do is to give students the ability to move from the uh, lab itself or from the, the teaching environment in the university to also couple this with field studies. So in other words, we can bring students uh, out into the field to look at field uh, locations. If it's not too bright and if the sun isn't shining too brightly, we can actually allow them to, to look at these uh, on their uh, smartphones or even later on back in the hostel if it's a, uh, a residential field course. Um, one of the tasks initially um, that we had to start out to do was among the partner organisations, uh, the five organisations, was to look at the various courses and programmes that use um, the uh, petrological microscope. So. Uh, we, began, we basically made a, a, a table of them and began to look at what are the shared ingredients in each of the menus that the, um, that the institutions uh, deliver to their students. Um, we also went uh, did uh, quite a intense look at what resources are available in each of their virtual learning environments. Each of the partner organisations in Ireland use uh, Blackboard Learn. Um, so that was very, very useful in identifying how we can, in, in a sense, throw the net and catch as much um, with what we're going to develop. Um, so we have our first batch of rocks, as I mentioned there. Um, I was in the Open University um, recently enough, and it was quite a pleasure to be able to have the Irish um, samples of rocks alongside the other sample of rocks which are being developed at the moment, which are um, moon rocks from the Apollo missions uh, between 1969 and 1972. So what I'd like to I suppose get across with this is the virtual microscope is developing and when we talk about the impact uh, for the future it's growing it's got an international um, I suppose uh, application and alongside the resources which will be specifically geared to um, teaching and learning here in Ireland students will if you like if they hit the wrong link they will end up on something very very interesting as well so you know either on the moon or uh, elsewhere we have our own dedicated website. Uh, the name of the project is um, 
uh, is, is G-Lab or the Geoscience E-Laboratory. E However, we've kind of tweaked it a little bit and introduced a Geolab. We think it communicates a bit more to students, to teachers. It even has a bit, it runs off the tongue a, a little bit easier. So we're, we're hosting that website. Um, that is, I guess it's certainly in development and uh, we'll tweak it as we go along. But this is just a, a quick look at it here where we will um, have links through to the virtual microscope where we'll have links to the Irish University collection and also um, we will tie in some of these samples into field sites so that we will actually have this macro scaled um, uh, availability of um, uh, geological learning material. Everything from Google Earth flyovers and movies down to outcrop level, um, gig, um, in, uh, interactive well, not exactly interactive, um, very, very high quality panoramic images of uh, field sites right down to microscopic level and hand specimens. So if you like giving students uh, the, full, uh, the full scale altogether. Um, as I mentioned there, yes, we're looking at, yeah, we have actually already um, two examples of field sites and um, on the website and we're looking at introducing published research that, that does use some of these thin sections of rock slides uh, to actually help inform and uh, to integrate into our undergraduate teaching. So that's very nice. Pat, will I drop back to you for this? Sure. So in terms of impact, um, I suppose the first and obvious thing is that we'll uh, acquire a full uh, set of Irish focused digitized uh, material, uh, which is the first of its kind again building on the uh, initial materials developed by Trinity College Dublin. Um, this is the first time, I think, hand on my heart, that all the Irish geoscience uh, uh, departments or schools, and they're quite small, have come together and worked in close collaboration in turn, with respect to teaching. Um, and it's been great. You know, for the first time we've been speaking to colleagues uh, with a shared vision, and, and I think that cannot be uh, understated here. We have the, um, in terms of the, the, the logistics and the practicalities, one of the core drivers here is to reduce costs and reduce resource costs, which are increasingly in the third level sector are a big issue for us. Again, this idea of having to produce uh, very delicate uh, rock thin sections that are quite expensive to produce. They're over 50, you know, 30 to 50 euros a, a pop to produce. They're so easily broken that will hopefully, or this initiative will, uh, will hopefully address that. So, um, in terms of national impact, we're, we're, we're reaching out to um, the, the idea, of course, would be that the material that we produce will be, um, and certainly all the digitized slides that we produce as part of the Open University uh, collection, uh, the Irish uh, collection within the Open University collection will be online and open access. Um, we will develop a number of e-tutorials um, and other teaching resources, that, again, that will be shared. Um, in terms of promoting this, I think uh, we should mention ICRAG here, which is the Irish Centre for Research. This is a recently funded SFI national research initiative. And I think it's fair to say that this initiative uh, had a big role in bringing together the departments involved, the teaching departments involved, uh, in putting in for, for this uh, proposal and, uh, and driving it. We're going to reach out to, and, I, and have reached out to the Irish Geological um, Survey. We have an annual uh, research meeting, and obviously I should say, uh, which is not mentioned here, is that we will be looking to deliver uh, papers at international conferences as well, in particular uh, the European Geophysical Union meeting uh, um, uh, in, in, in uh, Vienna. So I think in terms of sustainability, I think as it stands, we're going to produce, uh, or we'll produce, we'll have a series of digitized Irish rock thin sections, uh, up to 20 thin sections. We'll have a, a set of resources that, in terms of long-term use, um, over the course of the, the 18 months of the project, uh, when, as they're developed, will have a future, or will have a long-term impact uh, to, uh, to teaching uh, in Irish uh, third-level institutions. There will be there, there will be a resource that can be tapped into I would say, for, for many years to come. Um, the potential of this technology in terms of uh, distance learning and adult and continued adult and continue, uh, continue education is, is pretty obvious. This is user friendly, this is accessible to people. Uh, the requirement for people to come in to dedicated labs uh, in some respects uh, is uh, reduced. And again, 
the fact that it's uh, dovetailing very nicely with ICRAG, I think, will only add um, to the on, you know to the to the longer term sustainability uh, of the, the project. So I think I will leave it there. And again, let me take this opportunity to thank uh, the National Forum for the support in this. It's been very very beneficial. Thank you. Thanks for